How's your day so far? Oh, it's going good. It's going good. And yourself? Good. Oh, you're looking crazy. Just calm down. Good, good. I'm like super excited for this. If you can write hello, hello world, hello. hello world, you can change the world. Okay, Maya, believe in yourself. You got this. Let's go. Given an array nums of n integers, are there elements a, b, c, and nums such that a plus b plus c equals zero? Find all unique triplets in the array, which gives the sum of zero. So I think I'm going to start by breaking down the problem. So given an array nums of n integers. So let me just copy that part of the question because that's key. So would I be able to be given the empty array? Yes. Okay, nice. So I can have the empty array. And then I can also assume that I can be given a huge amount of numbers, infinity. Sure. Okay, that is good to know. So lowest equals empty array, and the highest equals an infinite amount of numbers in the array. So that is good to know. And then are there elements A, B, C, and nums such that a plus b plus c equals zero. So for example, if a was zero, b was zero, and c was zero, would that still count as an answer to this question? Yes. Okay, good to know. So let me just take note of that. That is something I can test at the end of this question. So let me write zero, zero, zero equals acceptable. Okay, I'm starting to get a feel for this question. So then find all unique triplets in the array which gives the sum of zero. Find all unique triplets. So I guess a question that I have, if I'm given negative one, zero, and one versus one, zero, and then negative one, do I return both or do I just return one of them? So, would I just return one of these as the answer? Yes. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. So, I'm going to just comment this, and this is my understanding, and the solution set must not contain duplicate triplets, so I just suggest that right there. So I think I'm good with really breaking down this question. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start writing some pseudocode. The solution I'm thinking of is the brute force solution. So what we would have is we'd have three nested for loops and basically through with each for loop we'd have a different pointer. So for example, the outermost for loop we would have, let's say I, the middle one would have J, and the innermost for loop would have K. And then what we could do is check array at I plus array at J plus array at K and see if that equals like the sum of zero. Oh my goodness, girl. Three nested for loops? That solution is trash, 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 trash. You need to think of a faster solution, come on. However, I'm not sure if I wanna approach it that way just because the complexity of that algorithm is terrible and it'll be O of N cube complexity and I know that is not the solution I want. I feel like what I need is some way that I can iterate through this array or like some way that I can find the different combinations faster. So I'm in a faster lookup time. And when I think of faster lookup times, I think about hash sets. However, I'm not sure if I want to use a hash set just because I'll be adding new space complexity into the problem. And I'm not sure if I want to go that route. So I'm trying to think. I need to gain more information about this array. And something interesting that I actually noticed was in the example, negative one, negative one, two. At first I thought it was out of order. However, it's not. It's like from basically lowest to highest, it's in ascending order. So I think I might gain information about the array if I sort it. So for example, I'm going to take the array that was given in the question and I'm just gonna See if I can sort this bad boy. 
So let's do negative four, negative one, negative one, and then zero, one, two. Okay, so now from sorting the array, we know that the lowest number is on the left hand side and the biggest number is on the right hand side. And I feel like I could somehow use this to my advantage. So what I think I want to do is I'll have three different pointers. So I would have I, I would have left pointer, and I would have right pointer. So if I have left pointer equal to the lowest number, and then I have right pointer equals to the highest number, I think I can, oh, I got the solution. I think I can look at different combinations that way, and if a number is too big or if a number is too small, I know I should move a pointer to account for that. So like, for example, let's say we take negative four, which is gonna be equal, i is equal to negative four, and then let's take our left pointer, so our left pointer is equal to negative 1, and then let's take our right pointer, and our right pointer, let's say that's equal to 2. So you can see our left pointer is equal to the lowest number, that's not i, and our right pointer is equal to the highest number. So then if we, oh yeah, and by the way, i, left pointer, and right pointer, they actually represent positions, so like the value 4 is actually like array at i is equal to 4. Just so I'm being pretty clear with that. But anyway, so if we do negative 4 plus negative 1 plus 2, that is negative 4 minus 1 plus 2 equals negative 5 plus 2, which equals negative 3. So negative 3, that number is less than 0. So what we can actually do is we want a number that's greater. So we need like a higher number. So left pointer needs to be a higher number. So for example, we can increase it to negative one. However, this makes a good point because if we try negative one again, it's a duplicate. So we're gonna be repeating the same process for basically a number that we just tried. So we'd actually have to increase the pointer twice, twice but let me leave a note over here saying that um, look out for dupes in the array. Okay, so that's a good point. And then, yeah, so we can just keep increasing it. So now if we do negative 4 plus 0, that is negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So negative 2 is closer to 0. So I think this is the algorithm that I want to go for. I want to have three different pointers. I want to sort the array. And based off the sum that I get after adding all of the different numbers together, that's going to determine how I, loop, how I move my left and right pointer. Okay, so now let's get into the code. So the first thing I'm going to do is label the example that I just went through. I'm also going to comment this out just so I can save it for future reference just in case I need it. And now I'm going to sort the num array. This was given as a parameter. And again, I'm sorting it in order to understand about the different types of elements that are in this array. So what are the smaller versus larger ones? And now I'm creating a variable called all three sum arrays. And I'm also returning this variable. This array represents all the different arrays whose numbers, three numbers, add up to zero. So now I'm getting into the meat of everything. I'm going to iterate through the array, and I do this through a for loop. Uh, and then I'm also creating a variable called nums length, which represents the length of the array. So now we need to think about when do we want our for loop to terminate? When do we stop looping? So of course we want to loop through the entire array, and nums length represents that value. However, if we want to stop looping at nums length minus two. So the reason why we have that minus two part is because we have three different pointers, i, left pointer, and right pointer. So we're comparing three different numbers at a time. So when we only have two elements left in the array, that means we can't make that three-way comparison. So we need to stop looping because at all times we're comparing three different numbers. Now we are going to create our left pointer and our right pointer. So our left pointer represents 
the smallest number in the array that is not i, so i plus 1. You can also see that in our example, it was a negative 1, which is 1 away from i. And then we are also going to create our right pointer, and it's going to be equal to the length of the array minus 1, which is going to be the largest number that is in our array, and in the example, it was 2. So for the next part of our algorithm, we're going to be changing our left pointer and our right pointer based off the total sum we have so far. So we're going to talk about what that terminating condition is a little bit later. So now we can do the adding, the a plus b plus c. So we'll do nums at i plus nums at left pointer plus nums at right pointer. And we're going to take that sum, as you can see like we did in our example, adding those three numbers together. And that's going to be equal to a variable called temp three sum total. There are three situations we need to take account for when our temp three sum total is equal to zero, when it's less than zero, and when it's greater than zero. So first let's talk about what we should do when it's equal to zero. When our temp three sum total is equal to zero, that means we have found a combination of numbers whose sum is zero. So we can append that to our result, and our result is called all three sum arrays. We can also now update what our left pointer and our right pointer is pointing to. So we're going to increase our left pointer by one, and then we're also going to move our right pointer to the left by one. So the reason why we do this is because we want a new combination of numbers for the given index we are at. Because if we just move to one pointer, that doesn't make sense because there will not be another unique triplet if two pointers stayed the same. Okay, so if our temp three sum is less than zero, then that means, you know, the number was a little bit too small and we need to add like a bigger number to our addition. And then if the temp three sum total is greater than zero, that means the number is too big and we need to add a smaller number to our addition. So for the case that is less than zero, let's move our left pointer to the right by one so we can try a slightly bigger number. And then same thing for when the number is too big. We know our smaller numbers are to the left. So let's move our right pointer one to the left and try adding everything again to see if this changes whether our number is closer to zero. What should we put in this while loop? Well, let's say our left pointer is equal to negative one and our right pointer is equal to two. Left pointer is equal to negative one and our right pointer is equal to one. There's gonna get to a point where our left pointer and our right pointer is pointing to the same number. This is not good because this violates what the question is asking. The question is asking for a plus b plus c, different elements. So while our left pointer is less than our right pointer, then we can keep looping and updating our left and our right pointer. We'll ensure our left pointer and right pointer is never pointing to the same element. So if we run our code, you'll see that we'll get the wrong answer. And the reason why we have the wrong answer is because there's a duplicate array in our final output. So the reason why that happens is let's say we found the combination negative one, zero, one. When we increase i by 1, we will find the combination again, negative 1, 0, 1, just because there is two negative 1s in the array. So what we can do, as long as i is greater than 0, we don't want any out-of-bounds problems, and the number we're currently at, if that was equal to the number we just saw, then we just need to continue, we keep it pushing, because we don't want any duplicate answers. So when we run our code again, you'll see that we will have the correct answer. Y'all, if you have made it this far in the video, please let me know in the comments below. Like, I didn't know if this video was going to be boring for y'all. So if you don't like it, it's all good. Just let me know in the comments below. We are at the last home stretch, y'all. So we're still going to have this while loop. And we're going to have this check that's similar to the check that we had before. So as long as our left pointer is less than our right pointer, if nums at left pointer at that position, if that's equal to the new position that we're updating left pointer to be, then we do not need to waste our time. So we can make left pointer be equal to the next number. And we're going to do the same thing for the right pointer. So as long as our left pointer is less than our right pointer, however, if our nums at position right pointer, if that's equal to nums at position right pointer plus one, then we are not wasting our time and we're going to have right pointer equal to right pointer minus one. Like we're just gonna move right along because no need to run this whole algorithm if we already know what the answer is going to be. 
And then after this whole shebang, there's one more check that we need to make. And this was kind of tricky. Like, I did not see this my first time going, like, doing this problem. However, as an optimization, let's say i is at a positive number. So it's at a number greater than zero. There is no way that these numbers could equal zero. So let's say the numbers were one, two, three. That's not going to equal zero. So an optimization we can make, if nums at position i, if that's greater than zero, then we can just return all three sum arrays. Like we're good, we know all the different possibilities we have, and that's it. So this is the final solution. So let me know in the comments below what solution you use. And also as a little trick question, let me know if you think if I use a hash set that would also work. So the new solution that I came up with, the complexity is O of n squared, which is a huge improvement from O of n cubed. Thank you so much for interviewing me today. I really appreciate it. I had so much fun. And yeah, so thank you so much. And when will I hear back from you? Very soon. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. See ya.